Cool. So I think it's, it's time and I can start. Hi, everyone. Thank you for, for joining. As Mariana was saying, I'm going to continue with the topic of, of experimentation now. I'm gonna continue with the topic on experimentation, but this talk is gonna be a bit more technical. So before I, I give a summary, let me introduce myself. I'm Maria, I'm senior product analyst in Globo, in case there's someone that doesn't know me, especially the ones connecting online. And I've been here for almost three years working on experimentation among other things. So the topic in this talk is gonna be about a Python library that we have built to help the analyst in Globo run better experiments and faster. Uh, if you are not an expert in experimentation or you don't know the basis, I hope you connected to the previous talk because GT already introduced some of the concepts that I'm gonna be talking about today. I'm not gonna be explaining them because we need to focus on the Python part and if I had to explain everything about experimentation, it would be just impossible. Um, so before we begin, I want to, I hope this works. Yes, I want to give credit where credits are due. I didn't build this package on my own. I, I had a lot of help. Uh, we had all these people contributing to it. You might recognize GT from, from the previous talk. So I wanted to thank all of them for helping. And also, uh, it's not just because I couldn't do it on my own. I obviously couldn't, it would be impossible. But we wanted to create a package that would apply to everyone in global, not only to marketplace data that is where I work, where we run experiments on customers. We wanted to have the perspective of people that were running experiments for couriers or for partners or something else, if we have something else. So we wanted to involve everyone to, to make sure we cover all the cases that we could. Okay, before we jump into the core content, I want to provide some context on why we need this how it started and, and why is it so important that we do this. Uh, if we rewind some months into the past and we look at the state of experimentation at Globo, we were running out of experiments. Things were kind of working out, but it was not really right. This was like the gift. We were saying this is fine, but we knew there were some issues. Uh, I've classified them into two groups. There are some issues more related to the way we were launching the experiments, like the platform part of it, and some issues with the way we were analyzing experiments. Uh, first of all, mm, we were launching experiments using a system called the, the feature toggles that are using experiment scores. And in case someone that is not from Globo is listening or someone that is not from tech, I'm gonna explain these concepts a little bit. So the feature toggles is, um, is a system that developers uh, use to decide if the app needs to show one version of the code or another. So when, when, when they develop a new feature, uh, they don't delete the old code, it stays there. And in some cases we don't activate it for all users, like when we experiment. And they could, like when the app is called, they need to know if they need to show the new version or the old version. And the way we were deciding this for the experiments was based on experiment scores. Experiment scores is a score that gets assigned to a user the first time they, <laughs> this mic is going crazy. <laughs> the first time they join the app, and it's a score from zero to 100. It gets assigned randomly, but it stays with the user through their entire lifetime in Global. So if you joined four years ago, and you got a experiment score like, let's say 20, now your experiment score is still 20. So what problem did we have with all of this? First of all, using feature toggles for these feature toggles are not thought for experimentation. So there was no way for us to keep track of all the experiments that were live. And different teams have, uh, have tried different methods, but none of them were, of these were really working. Like our team, we were putting the events in a, in a calendar so we could keep track of the experiments that we have, but we know that not all the teams were doing that. So they didn't have visibility about our experiments. We didn't have visibility about their experiments. Probably there were other teams losing other methods that we didn't know. And all of, it, all of this was causing a lot of chaos as well. Uh, the experiment scores have some bias that we were aware of and we were trying to mitigate as, as we could, but it was impossible to completely remove it. Since these experiment scores are constant, uh, these users and these scores have been affected by all the experiments. And since this is not changing at all, this bias created by all experiments stays in time. 
I think this is clear with an example. So imagine that we do an experiment that fails miserably on retention. And 50% of the users see this experiment. This feature is not launched because it was a failed, but there are some users that saw it and we didn't retain them. So we lost some users in the test group. This experiment scores that saw the, the experiment, like saw the new feature, would forever have less users than the rest. Because the new users would allocate randomly into the scores, but we cannot do anything about the ones that we already lost. So this is just one example of the bias that we can create, but there were many other possible things that could happen. Uh, on the other side, in the part of the analysis, the way we were analyzing experiments was completely ad hoc. Each analyst on their own. Like you could get an experiment and you just run your analysis the best that you could. Some things have already solved this internally, like they have some code that they share among them to make it a bit more automated and a bit more standard, but it was still within the team. And this code was still something that was shared, maybe like I send you it through Slack and you copy paste and then maybe you do some changes, but I don't see them. And it was very messy. So problems with this, there is no knowledge sharing. We, um, there is very high possibility of bugs because you are the only one looking at that code. You already know how it works. You are not reviewing it. You are not going to find the bugs. And even worse, when a new team or an existing team is trying something new, something fancy, something state of the art, there was very little communication with other teams. So the knowledge sharing was even worse when you are talking about other teams. And this was creating silos of knowledge and just making experiments in different teams harder to to understand. Uh, some time ago, we started trying to solve this. And there was a team that has built a very good experimentation platform. So will be the first part, we are already starting to use it. Unfortunately, not all the experimenters are here, but many of them are. And this platform is not using experimental scores, is using a proper randomization system that is different for each experiment, which means that if you have overlapping experiments, you don't have a problem since the randomization is different. The impact on the other experiments would not impact your results. So you have two experiments at the same time. Even if you don't know it, it's fine. Your results are going to be the same. Um, also, this, this is a better way of tracking experiments because this is a experimentation platform. So everything that is there is an experiment. So even if you need it to have visibility, it's already better. But this is just a platform. This doesn't solve any of the problems that we had with the code. Because this, like, launching experiments doesn't give you results. And what happened here is that some, some time ago, we had a hackathon where we started to use the platform. We were trying to understand everything. And the team I was in, we decided to try to implement some statistical testing into the platform. Because we thought, OK, since we are already moving this, let's keep the ball rolling and also try to solve the analytics part of it. In the hackathon, it was very cool, but we realized we couldn't solve the whole thing in a 12-hour hackathon. It was impossible.